Imagine this, it's Black Friday. Traffic is spiking, pods are scaling, auto-scaling groups are screaming, and suddenly, new pods stop scheduling. Not because nodes are down, not because Kubernetes is broken, but because your VPC has run out of IP addresses. And here's the scary part, your EKS cluster is perfectly healthy. It just can't get more IPs. So what do you do? Without rebuilding the cluster, without deleting node groups, without touching production workloads, this is where EKS Enhanced Subnet Discovery comes in. And if you care about real-world EKS networking, this is something you need to understand. So instead of talking about this in theory, let's make the problem real. In this demo, I'm going to intentionally constrain the network. I'll build a VPC with a primary CIDR of 192.168.200.0/24, which means our subnets will have a very limited pool of IP addresses. That way, we can actually see what happens when an EKS cluster hits IP exhaustion. And more importantly, our enhanced subnet discovery lets us recover without rebuilding the cluster or touching running workloads. This repository demonstrates how Amazon EKS behaves when subnets run out of IP addresses and how to recover without rebuilding the cluster or modifying node groups. Start with a VPC using a slash 24 primary CIDR, intentionally limiting available IP addresses. Run EKS worker nodes in private subnets. Observe pod scheduling failures caused by subnet IP exhaustion. Expand the VPC address space using a secondary CIDR. Allow EKS to automatically consume new subnets via enhanced subnet discovery. This mirrors the real production incidents commonly seen during traffic spikes or rapid scaling events. To follow this demo end-to-end, -end, you will need an active AWS account, Terraform installed and configured, permissions to create VPC, EC2, EKS, and related networking resources, this repository cloned locally. Note, this demo provisions real AWS resources, including VPC components, EC2 instances, and an EKS cluster. AWS charges will apply. Remember to destroy all resources after completing the demo to avoid unnecessary cost. Before we deploy our infrastructure, let's jump over the AWS console. I cloned by repository onto this development EC2 instance. Take note of the EC2 IP address. It is this same IP address that shows up in my VS Code SH connection to it. To avoid using long-lived AWS access keys, I've assigned this EC2 instance an IAM role with administrative access. You can view this by selecting the instance, going to Actions, Security, Modify IAM role. To inspect the permissions attached to this role, open Identity and Access Management IAM in the console. Navigate to Roles, then search for my SSM role. Here you can see that the administrator access policy is attached. Let's now head over to the VPC console. At the moment, we only have two VPCs. Once we create our new EKS demo VPC, it should appear here as well. Under Elastic Kubernetes Service, we can see that there is no EKS cluster yet. We now move over to our cloned Terraform project repository. Here is the resource block that creates our VPC with the primary CIDR 192.168.0.0/24. Let's run Terraform apply right away. The plan looks good, so I approve it by typing yes. Heading back to the VPC console, we can now see a new EKS demo VPC has been created. Let's filter for the EKS demo VPC subnets. And here we can see the created public and private subnets. Going back to the new VPC, before diving in further, we can confirm that Terraform provisioned all resources with no errors. Under CIDRs, we can also see that no secondary CIDRs are provisioned yet. Only the primary CIDR 192.168.0.0/24 is present. Back in our Terraform project, we're now ready to provision the EKS cluster. 
To do that, we simply remove the block comment in the ecase.tf file. With the file commented out, we run our Terraform plan. I paused the recording briefly to fix a few code issues. Let's run the plan again. Everything looks good. Before moving on, I'm going to commit this to Git so that when you clone the repository, you start from a clean and working state. First, I'll comment the eks.tf file back out to keep the steps consistent. I'll commit the change and push it to the remote branch. Now, I'll uncomment the eks.tf file again so we can provision the eks cluster. Finally, let me run Terraform Apply with auto approve to save time, something you should never do in production. Let's jump over to the eks console where we can see that the cluster is now provisioning. Provisioning an EKS cluster takes a bit of time, so I'll pause the recording during some of the static sections where there isn't much to gain from watching. At this stage, you can see that the EKS cluster has been created and the VPC CNI plugin, a critical component for EKS subnet discovery, has been installed as shown in the Terraform output. Back in the console, I will log in again since the session has timed out. We can now see that the EKS cluster is fully provisioned in the in an active state. Next, we'll switch back to the terminal and update our cube config file so we can access the cluster to run our Kubernetes API commands. There was a small typo in my command, and now we're good. You can see a new context has been added. I'll test connectivity using the kubectl get nodes command to display our cluster worker nodes. Running kubectl get pods shows that there are currently no pods in the default namespace. I would now run kubectl describe nodes to view the maximum allowable pods per worker node for this particular instance type. The output shows that we can have up to 35 pods per worker node. If this is an existing cluster, you may also verify that the VPC CNI plugin is installed using the EKS describe add on command. It's now time to test our pod deployments and I'll start with a deployment using two replicas, which means two pods are expected to be provisioned. I will run kubectl get pods o wide to display the pod IP addresses. You can see that the two pods have IP addresses allocated from the VPC subnet ranges for our EKS environment. Let's push the pod count to 5 using the Kubernetes scale command. Running kubectl get pods again, we can see that all five pods are running successfully. It can also be convenient to run kubectl get pods together with a Linux word count command to see the number of pods, rather than counting them manually. We will now scale to 10 pods and take note that every time we scale, the pods consume IP addresses from the private subnets. Very soon, we expect to hit a dead end. For now, we still have all 10 pods provisioned with no issues. I'll now scale up to 34 pods. Viewing the pod status, everything is still looking good. Let me push it further to 50 pods. At this point, we can see some pods stuck in the container creating state. Even after refreshing a few times, the pods are still failing to complete provisioning. I'll run kubectl describe pod against one of the stuck pods to view the reason for the failure. And here we go. The reason is IP assignment failure. Back in our Terraform project, we'll now uncomment the second resider.tf file to provision the second resider. 
I will run a Terraform plan. From the plan, we can see the secondary CIDR range 100.64.0.0 slash 16 is ready for provisioning. At this stage, I'm happy with the plan, so I will go ahead and run a Terraform apply with auto approve. If we jump over to the VPC console, we can now see that the VPC is linked to a secondary CIDR block. Secondary private subnets have now been created within the secondary CIDR block range. At this point, those secondary private subnets are not yet tagged for EKS auto discovery, so the CNI plugin is unable to use them. As a result, our pods are still stuck in the pending state. Let's go ahead and uncomment the secondary CIDR tagging file to apply the required EKS tags. I'll run a Terraform apply with auto approve right away. If we jump back to the VPC console, we can see that the tags have now been assigned. Back in the terminal, let's check the pod status again. And here's the magic we've been waiting for. All of our pods have successfully scaled. Let's grip for pods assigned addresses from the 100 dot range addresses, which is our second resider range. And surely they show up, which proves that the subnet auto discovery has kicked in. Our Black Friday traffic can continue with no major outages or surprises. This is one of those moments that really highlights the role of a modern day network engineer, extending traditional networking skills into container networking. It's time to decommission our resources. I will delete my container deployment first. Finally, run Terraform Destroy and make sure all resources destroyed with no errors. Thank you for watching and happy container networking.